one of the great failures of imagination of the Dulles brothers and of their boss, President Eisenhower, was that they had no concept of what we would now call blowback. It never occurred to them that by charging into countries and overthrowing governments, uh, they wouldn't be just affecting policy over a short term, but that these interventions would have huge long-term effects. We assume that since we forget about these interventions, the people in the target countries will also forget, but that doesn't happen. The memory of these interventions festers and burns in their hearts and their souls, and it can take years or decades or even generations before those tensions explode. But when you set off that time bomb in society, it will explode. So you asked for some examples. Uh, one of the most uh, obvious ones as we look in today's paper has to do with Iran. We have been at a low level war essentially with Iran for 35 years. Um, and for Americans, the poison that has afflicted the US-Iran relationship really was dumped into the uh, wine of Concord in 1979 with the hostage crisis. As far as we're concerned, everything was going fine with Iran until the hostage crisis happened, which was all their fault, and then the relationship has spiraled down into this terrible self-defeating hostility. But Iranians don't see it that way. Iranians would say, well, the hostage crisis was one episode, but what really shaped our country was that we had a democracy here until 1953. Then the Dulles brothers charged in here, and since then, we have been under one form of dictatorship or another. So the Iran uh, crisis, if you want to call it that, our long hostility with Iran, which has included uh, the nuclear confrontation, can all be traced back to an intervention in 1953 uh, organized by the Dulles brothers. If you multiply that times all the countries in the world where they intervened, you really can see a pattern of so many of today's crises emerging from short-sighted interventions that the Dulles brothers conceived and carried out. <clears throat> where was Eisenhower in all this? Eisenhower's role is very interesting. Um, he turns out to have been a militant supporter of covert action. Uh, it's not true that the Dulles brothers acted uh, without his knowledge or behind his back. They, he knew everything they were doing and he approved of it. Now, why was Eisenhower such a strong supporter of these uh, covert operations? I think one uh, reason we mentioned earlier that it never occurred to, them, to him that this would have terrible effects in the long run. But he himself, of course, never spoke about why he favored covert action because he never admitted that he did. He never admitted that there was any covert action. But I think uh, if we could ask him today oh, why he supported that, we, we can imagine a couple of things he might say. First of all, um, Eisenhower, uh, as commander of American troops and, and allied troops in the Second World War, would have realized something that the public didn't know, which was that secret operations played a big role in winning World War II, like the breaking of the German codes. So he must have come away from that war with an appreciation for what covert action could do. But I think there's another factor. Eisenhower probably would have considered covert action a kind of a peace project. Here was a guy who had to send kids off to die by the thousands. This must have weighed on him. Arriving in office, he finds the Dulles brothers presenting him with an alternative. You can get rid of a government and only 100 people will die and, and none of them will be Americans and it will only cost you a couple of million dollars. He must have thought of this as a huge breakthrough. So if you can imagine that you're uh, achieving a security gain for the United States and there won't be any long-term negative effects and you can do it so cheaply, I think something like that would have been very appealing to Eisenhower. Yeah, yeah. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, a leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, Log on to mslaw.edu.